Our final presenter before the Q&A session is Michelle Harrison. Michelle is an MS specialist physical therapist who is aquatic therapy and rehab rehabilitation certified. She is the coordination of hydrotherapy program at the Rocky Mountain MS Center, and she is presenting on the four P's of energy conservation. Good morning. I'll have to find the, the microphone here. Um, yeah, I've been with the MS Center for over 30 years now. Um, and they asked me to speak on the four P's of energy conservation. So you might ask, why are we talking about energy conservation? Fatigue is one of the most common symptoms in MS. The MS Society says it affects about 80% of people. I've seen a little bit lower statistics on that, and I've seen anywhere up into kind of mid-90s as well but it interferes with a person's ability to function at work and at home. It's a primary cause for people to leave the workforce. And it's a prominent limitation for people who otherwise have minimal activity limitations. So what is fatigue? Fatigue and MS is not just ordinary tiredness, like you might get at the end of a hard day's work. MS fatigue is broken into kind of uh, different segments. And one is kind of this just overwhelming sense of tiredness with no obvious cause, kind of general kind of lassitude malaise that you might experience. Or you may have physical fatigue. And Dr. Shaw talked about some of these things. So they're going to overlap some of these things we're talking about. Where you do a little activity and then you're just really tired. Your arms, your legs, your body is really tired. You may wake up feeling as tired as you did as when you went to sleep. You may have a mental fatigue. So that's kind of maybe a fuzziness or you feel like you're processing not quite as quickly. So you can have a mental fatigue as well. And they break up the fatigue into primary fatigue and secondary fatigue. So primary fatigue is caused by the lesions or the nerve damage to the central nervous system. It's thought that certain parts of the brain are linked to fatigue, but no one specific area has been identified. And it can be due to damage in several areas in the brain and in the spinal cord. And so there's some research, they did MRI scans of people that complained or experienced is a better word to use, experienced fatigue. And what they found is that these MRI scans, when people have fatigue, really light up a whole lot. Like so if you have the lesion that slows or stops transmission of an impulse, and then the brain has to take this detour around to try and get that activity completed, a lot more of the brain lights up. Secondary fatigue results uh, from factors related to MS, but not MS itself. So muscle weakness, stiffness, or spasticity, pain, tremor, depression, bladder control issues, having to go to the bathroom often, frequency, urgency, which can also disturb sleep. But Dr. Shaw did a, talked about sleep disturbances and how that can really make you tired. If you have to get up multiple times a night, you're going to be more tired. You aren't getting into that REM sleep like she talked about. So how do we manage fatigue? There are medications, amantadine, provigil, ampira, decre or increases nerve impulse transmission, should make the work of walking less. Sleep hygiene, again, having good sleep habits, maybe picking a time that you go to bed, you know, and kind of to make sure you get adequate hours of sleep. Turning off devices before at a certain time, before you try and kind of ramp down and get to sleep. Diet, having good nutrition to help fuel your body for any task, mental or physical. And exercise. And again, people are going to say, oh, but exercise makes me tired. Well, we're trying to improve strength, flexibility, 
balance, endurance. And if we can improve those things, usually people feel better. They feel like they can navigate all their activities of daily living and not be quite so tired. And then the techniques of the four Ps. So they are prioritize, plan, pacing, and position. So when we're talking about prioritizing, we're deciding what we need to get done and what we can do that day or we need to put off to another day or time. What do we need to do first? What's the most important thing if you have multiple things to get completed throughout your day? Trying to get heavier tasks done when you have more energy. That can be cognitively, mentally, or physically. Distribute household chores throughout the week. I think we cross out household and just say chores, any chores, right? Work chores, home chores, volunteer chores. I mean, anything that you're doing. And if you have a social engagement and you really want to be there and not just be exhausted by the time you get there, maybe you do a few less activities that day. Maybe you prioritize that as what you really want to spend your energy on. And add in adequate rest breaks. You're going to hear this more than once from me. So an activity I've had people work on to think about prioritizing your day is uh, write down everything you have to do in a day. And then we rank it. A is the world will stop spinning if I don't get it done today. B is it'll stop spinning if I don't get it done this week. C is this month. And D is delegate, okay? So if everything that you have on your priority list is an A, we need to talk. So because you're going to be exhausted, because you can't get probably all of that done. And so your PTs and OTs are going to be really good resources to, to learn what the P's are, how to implement these ideas, and how you put those into, you know, whatever your schedule is, you know, what's important for you. Plan, plan your activities. I think prioritizing and planning kind of overlap a little bit. Planning is thinking about everything you have to do to get a task done, be it getting showered and dressed for the day, gardening, cooking, work tasks, whatever. Try to alternate heavy and light tasks. Distribute activities throughout the week. Again, you're going to hear some trends here. Um, putting a schedule on the refrigerator to remind you and others in your household who does what and when that needs to get done. And remember to use your family and friends because most people really do want to help. And if you're really struggling or an activity is really energy expensive for you, if you can kind of communicate what your needs are around that, usually people are more than happy to help. Pacing, try and maintain a slow and steady pace. Try not to rush. When we rush, we get more tired. And that goes for, I think these concepts aren't just for people with MS, I think it goes to everybody in the room, kind of organizing your day, pacing, planning. Rest often. Here it is again. Avoid holding your breath. Practice slow and steady breathing. Oxygen brings energy into our bodies. That energy is taken to the tissues, to the organs, to our muscles. It just helps bring energy in. So panting, holding our breath kind of decreases energy. And again, remember, it's okay to ask for help if you need it. Listen to your body. Know your limits. Rest before you're tired. A friend of mine is an occupational therapist, and she and her husband started running marathons. So they went to a class and to learn how to be more efficient with their running. And so what they were told is every hour that you run, you should stop for five minutes and walk. And that seems counterintuitive. Well, that's not going to help my time. It did help their time. And then they weren't nearly as tired at the end of the race. So whatever your race is, adding in those rest breaks before you're at the wall, right? And you can't do any more. The wall of fatigue. 
Try not to complete a whole task at once. Maybe you break it up into steps. So if you're cooking, maybe you chop in the night before, the morning of, and maybe you assemble later. So you kind of break that task up a little bit. And I like to teach people about um, the RPE scale, rate of five, uh, rate of perceived exertion. So it's a way to kind of figure out how much en energy you're spending, whether you're exercising or doing activities of daily living. Position. Try not to bend, reach, twist too much. This can cause fatigue and shortness of breath. Use of equipment that might be recommended to you, reachers, long-handled shoehorns, bath brushes, elastic laces, sockades. Upright posture. It's important. If we're lined up better, our body doesn't have to work quite as hard to stay in position. So if you're standing up, leaning forward to walk, your muscles are really working hard to try and hold you up all the time. And that's an energy expensive way to walk or to sit or to stand. Sit when you can, focus on your activities and breathing and sitting decreases energy use by 25%. So now we're gonna apply some of these concepts to dressing and hygiene, one area, sit when you can. Here, here's the trends, organize your, act, your clothes and supplies the night before for the shower, dress your lower half of your body first, as that will take more energy. Using equipment that might be recommended to you by a PT or an OT, bath stools, grab bars, raised toilet seats, footstools, chairs, any kinds of act, you know, uh, equipment that could help make the task easier. Use a robe instead of towels to dry off. Dress your weaker side first, and try and wear clothes that are easy to put on and off, that maybe tops that you can just slide over your head, not lots of buttons and snaps and uh, uh, zippers and things. Things with elastic waists to just pull up, pants, skirts, shorts, Velcro closures for instead of buttons or for your shoes. Shopping, make a list. I know if I don't make a list, I almost always forget one thing. I have to run back across the store or go back <laughs> to the store. Organize the list by aisle or section. Use a buggy instead of a basket. Maybe you do ba bags that are half full and shop with someone that can help carry them or have them help load things in your car at the store and your family helps unload when you get home. Avoid rush hours to avoid standing in deli lines or checkout lines. Consider a delivery service. And since the pandemic, we have online shopping. You, you know, do your order online, you go there and uh, go to the store, call in, they bring it out to your car. It's a pretty nice uh, service. Cooking, plan ahead for your meals again. Gather ingredients, cook and bake in steps. We talked about this. Make larger meals and freeze smaller portions for later use through the week. Maybe you use lightweight cookware and dishes. Some pans are really heavy. Paper plates and cups if you don't wanna wash at all. Uh, use your electrical appliances, dishwashers, food processors, blenders, can openers. Maybe you get pre-chopped things in the store. Those are available. Consider buying easy to prepare or frozen meals. Maybe use a delivery service. Our last slide, we're gonna talk about walking and mobility. The use of equipment can really help decrease the energy it takes to walk. If you have weakness, if you have balance problems, if you have uh, a tremor or ataxia. So canes, walker, walkers, crutches, uh, walking sticks, AFOs, uh, BioNest, walk aids can all help decrease energy it takes to be up and on your feet. But I think also gait training with the equipment is really important to help you learn good posture, good use of the equipment, and help with that idea of positioning again. Planning what device or multiple devices you may need to participate in an activity. And then using a scooter 
or a wheelchair for longer distances may help. I live in Capitol Hill in Denver. I could walk to Cherry Creek Mall and then I can walk once I get to the mall. But most likely I'm going to drive my car to get to the mall and then walk around the mall. So kind of maybe saving some energy so you can walk and participate in activities like vacation. I hear Disneyland, uh, the airport, are areas that uh, people just wear themselves out trying to participate. So I want to thank you because you're awesome. There's one more slide in your handouts about housework. Uh, that kind of encapsulates some more of these concepts, but it, we felt like that kind of, we went over some of these already. So thank you. <laughs>